Hey, Learn Audio Engineering! This is the second video in our DIY XLR microphone cable series. In our first video, we covered step one, prepping the wire. In step two, you're going to learn how to tin the wire and to tin the terminals on the XLR ends in preparation for soldering. Let's get started. A lot of people try to avoid this step. They just put the connectors together and put solder on them and hope it sticks. The reason we don't want to do that is because we want to avoid the possibility of what's called a cold solder joint, where the solder melts and sticks to something but doesn't necessarily bond the two connections together. So our next step is going to be just to heat up our soldering iron and then tin both the wires and the terminals or the connection points on our connectors so that when we put them together and add solder, we know it's connecting the two of them to create a permanent bond. So it's a really easy process. Now I usually, when I'm doing stuff that involves soldering, is I use this little tool that I believe is called a third hand. And it's just a little bracket that has two alligator clips on the ends and a couple of ball and socket type adjustments so that you can hold your cable wherever you need to. Now the idea of soldering is actually not to use the soldering iron to melt the solder, but to have the contact hot enough that it takes the solder. Now this is a, a solder that has a flux core, 2%, uh, or I believe 2.2% of an acid flux. And the job of the acid that's part of the solder is to burn pits into the surface of the copper wires so that the solder bonds and bonds permanently. And then you've got the lead and silver solder, which will essentially create the bond once we melt it. So we have our soldering iron. This particular model I, uh, has an adjustable temperature. I usually run my temperature some, something around 450 to 460 degrees. And we usually just wipe the soldering iron off on sponge, which is wet, to help clear off any solder. And then the first thing we do is we tin the soldering iron. Just run the solder on it a few times until we see that the solder is melting. Now we don't need all that solder, but we wanted to make sure that the soldering iron is ready to go. And we clean that off. And then we go in on our individual conductors and we heat them up. And then as they heat up, we apply solder to them. And you'll see the solder will melt on the soldering iron and gradually go into the conductors. And we put on enough solder until we can see that the entire end has been tinned. Again, I'm cheating a little bit here by melting it onto the soldering iron and, and just pulling it off onto the conductors. Now I'll turn the shield around so it's a little closer to me. And you can start on either end of the shield. Because it's a lot of wire, it'll take a significant amount of heat, so I will generally put some solder in to help that heat transfer into the shield wire. And then once you can see that the shield wire is heating up and taking solder, you can then run up and down the conductor. Use enough that you have a fair amount of flux goes on to the conductor to help burn that in. And as you can see, you can move back and forth. You will actually see the solder flowing through that conductor and then you know the whole conductor has solder on it and the flux has done its job. Now obviously in the case of the shield wire, the solder has a second job and that's to prevent any of these copper strands from coming disconnected and giving you a short inside the cable. So you do want to make sure that you tin the ground conductor or the shield wire all the way back to where it comes out of the rubber jacket so that there's no chance of any fibers coming loose and causing it any kind of a short. At that point it's a good idea just to do an inspection and see if you can see any exposed wire. Make sure that there's no fibers hanging out that are going to get in your way or that you didn't miss anything and that you have a good tinning of all of your conductors. I should probably mention that the higher the silver content of the solder, the better it is sonically and the harder it is to use. I think it's worth doing it with a high silver solder to make sure that you get the best sounding cables you can make. Now the next step is not a bad idea to have a small bench vise. And we're going to be taking, in this case, the female end, and this is the part of the Neutrik 
FXX series, and you will see that there are essentially three cups that are your places for the wire to go. Now, every XLR connector has three contact points. There's contact point number one, and contact point number one is where your ground wire goes, which is the shield wire. Across from contact point number one is contact point number two. That is where your hot wire or signal wire goes, and then the neutral wire goes in the third slot. When we're going to be terminating, we're going to be actually making sure we start by putting our ground wire into number one, and then we're just going to put the other two conductors opposite them. For the tinning process, we're just going to start by putting the connector in our bench vise. We're going to use our soldering iron to heat up the connections and then use a very small amount of solder, just enough so that there's flux attacking this contact point so that we can put our wire in there. If you use too much solder, you'll fill it and then you got no room for your wire. So we just use a small amount and we use the heat and the flux to get us that bond on the connector. Now we're gonna wait when we put our soldering iron tip in and give it a chance to heat up so we don't have to use very much solder and it can instantly have the flux help that solder spread out across the connection. And then we'll just give it a quick inspection, make sure that each of our contact points have some solder firmly bonded, and that connector is now ready for termination. Before we do that, let's just do the other two so that they're ready. Here's a pro tip, or maybe a semi-pro tip. Start with your female connector because it's easy to put in a bench vise. You can use the female connector to hold the male connector while you tin it. We're also going to be using those connectors to hold each other while we terminate them. Now we have our male and female ends for one cable tinned, ready to go. We'll just give them a quick inspection and make sure that we have solder bonded into each of the points on the terminal to make sure that we're ready to go. Let's start with the Mogami cable in terms of terminating. Now I'm going to look at my connector and I'm going to find the number one. Now in this case, the number one conductor is farthest away from me. And that's where I'm going to need to put the ground. Now in this case, I've got a little too much wire here, so I'm going to trim them so that they're all the same length. I'll just kind of squeeze them together and cut them. So I'm leaving a good eighth of an inch on the end of the smaller conductors, and then I just make the third conductor, the ground conductor, the same length. Thanks for watching. Join me in our last video where we're going to cover steps three and four, soldering, termination, and testing. If this video helped you out, please give it a like with a thumbs up and subscribe to learn audio engineering.